Have you ever wondered if you possess a hidden superpower that could change your life and those around you in extraordinary ways? Imagine waking up tomorrow with a newfound ability that not only deepens your spiritual connection, but also transforms your everyday interaction. Sounds intriguing, right? Well, today's the day we're diving into some of the most remarkable and rare superpowers that only a few truly chosen ones develop. These aren't the flashy abilities you might see in a superhero movie. Instead, these are profound gifts that resonate deeply within the Christian faith and have the power to uplift and transform your entire life. We're talking about superpowers like profound intuition that guides you with divine clarity, healing words that mend hearts and spirits, and vision beyond sight that reveals deeper truths. And that's just the beginning. We'll also explore how unwavering faith in trials can turn the darkest moments into shining testimonies of God's grace, and how transformative leadership can inspire real, lasting change in your community. So, if you've ever felt like there's more to your faith journey than meets the eye, or if you're looking to unlock your full potential in ways you never thought possible, stick around. Because in the next few minutes, we're going to uncover these spiritual superpowers and how you can develop them to not only enhance your life, but to make a significant impact on those around you. Let's get started and discover how you can tap into these divine gifts that could change everything. Let's dive right into the first of our rare superpower is profound intuition. Now, when I say intuition, I'm not just talking about a hunch or a fleeting feeling. I mean, a deep, almost supernatural sense that guides you, almost like an inner voice that whispers the right paths in your ears when you're at life's crossroads. It's that uncanny ability to make decisions that not only turn out to be correct, but often come with significant impacts, not just for you, but for everyone around you. You might be wondering, where does this profound intuition come from? For those of us in tune with our spiritual side, it's clear that this is more than just our subconscious talking. It's the Holy Spirit working within us. It's like being plugged into a divine source that lights up the right options and dims down the less favorable ones, guiding us almost effortlessly. So, how do you know if you're experiencing this kind of profound intuition? It's not about predicting the lottery numbers or knowing exactly when the phone will ring. No, it's more significant than that. It's about feeling strongly drawn to make decisions that may seem illogical at the moment, but lead to outcomes that resonate with peace and clarity. It's when you meet someone and you just know there's a deeper connection or purpose that needs exploring. Let's talk about the real world impact of profound intuition. Imagine you're at a job interview and something tells you this isn't the right fit, despite the job offering everything you thought you wanted. Or perhaps you're thinking about moving to a new city, and you feel an unexplainable peace about one option over another. This intuition can steer you away from harm or towards opportunities. It's like having an internal compass that points you towards your true north, even when the map seems blurry. Now, cultivating this profound intuition isn't something that happens overnight. It involves a lot of listening, listening to God, listening to your heart. And yes, even listening to the silence. It requires prayer, meditation, and often just being still. The noise of the world can drown out this delicate voice. So creating quiet in your life is essential. It's about learning to trust that inner voice more and more, testing it through small decisions and seeing the faithfulness of God as he guides you through them. As we wrap up our discussion on profound intuition, I want to encourage you to lean into this gift. It might seem elusive at first, but as you grow in your faith and your spiritual journey, you'll find this superpower becoming more apparent, more accessible. It's not just about making life easier. It's about making life more meaningful, more aligned with your divine purpose. So take a moment. Reflect on those times you've felt that guiding hand in your life 
and embrace the journey of cultivating this incredible superpower. Let's delve into our second rare superpower, is healing words. Now, this isn't just about saying nice things. It's about words that carry the power to heal wounds not seen with the eyes. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 16, 24, that pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. It's clear that words aren't just sounds or letters. They're forces of change, capable of turning despair into hope and doubt into faith. This kind of healing isn't just about physical ailments. It's about lifting spirits, mending broken hearts, and fostering spiritual renewal. Let's unpack how healing words work. Think about how a simple I believe in you can change someone's entire outlook. Or consider the comfort that flows from you are not alone. These phrases do more than communicate. They connect and heal. They carry weight, transforming despair into hope, isolation into fellowship, and conflict into peace. Words have this power because they're not just processed by the brain, but felt by the soul, bridging the gap between our human experience and our spiritual needs. Recognizing when to use healing words is crucial. These opportunities often arise during times of visible distress, but also in everyday interactions. It might be the tired cashier who looks like they could use a kind word or a friend sharing a slight hesitation in their voice, hinting at deeper struggles. These are the moments to impart strength, comfort, and encouragement. Being present and truly listening to others around you will reveal numerous chances to heal with your words. Now, how can you practice this superpower? First, always speak from a place of love and sincerity. People can tell when you mean what you say. Begin by affirming the good you see in others. Sometimes, a person just needs to be reminded of their worth. Don't shy away from expressing care and concern. If you sense someone is struggling, a simple, how can I support you, can be incredibly healing. Also, remember to be patient. Healing doesn't happen overnight. Your words are like seeds planted in someone's soul, needing time to grow and bear fruit. I've witnessed the incredible impact of healing words firsthand. There was once a young man in our community who always seemed a bit out of place, quiet and reserved. One day, during a group meeting, he shared how he struggled with feeling valuable or seen. Our group leader, responded with genuine affirming words, acknowledging his contributions and expressing how valued he was by all of us. This moment of kindness visibly lifted his spirits. Weeks later, he shared how that moment was a turning point for him, how it gave him a newfound confidence. It was a vivid testament to how powerful and transformative kind, healing words can be. As we close this segment on healing words, Remember that the superpower is as accessible as it is profound. It lies within your reach every day, ready to be used to mend, to build up, and to inspire. So, I challenge you to use your words wisely, to heal and uplift those around you, creating ripples of kindness and compassion that can transform lives in unimaginable ways. Moving forward to our third superpower, Vision beyond sight. What do we really mean by this? It's the ability to see beyond the immediate, beyond what the eyes can capture. This isn't about supernatural sight in the traditional sense. It's about perceiving underlying truths, understanding deeper spiritual realities, and sensing God's presence in everything around us. It's seeing with the heart and the soul, not just the eyes. The Bible is rich with stories of those who had this incredible vision. Take, for instance, the prophet Elisha. When his servant feared the enemy armies surrounding them, Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. And the servant's eyes were opened to see hills full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. Or consider the apostle Paul, whose physical sight was taken so that he could see the greater truth of Christ's gospel. These stories teach us that spiritual vision often transcends 
our physical limitations. How can we develop this kind of vision? It starts with deepening our spiritual practices. Regular prayer and meditation can tune our hearts to God's frequency. Spending time in scripture and in quiet contemplation helps to peel away the layers of everyday distractions and focus on the eternal. It's about making a habit of asking God to reveal his perspective, to help us see situations and people through his eyes. With great power comes great responsibility, and having vision beyond sight is no exception. This gift can be both a blessing and a burden. The responsibility lies in using this insight wisely to guide and serve others, not to judge or alienate them. There are also challenges, misunderstandings from those who don't share this vision, or the loneliness that can come from seeing what others can't. It's crucial to remain humble, patient, and compassionate, grounded in the love of Christ as you navigate the revelations this vision brings. Integrating this vision into daily life means staying continuously open to divine guidance. It's about allowing this sight to influence not just big decisions, but everyday interactions. Show kindness, offer forgiveness, and approach conflicts with a perspective that looks beyond the immediate to the eternal impacts. Living with spiritual vision isn't about removing yourself from the world, but engaging with it more fully, armed with the insight of what truly matters. As we conclude our exploration of vision beyond sight, I encourage you to seek this deeper perspective. It's about more than seeing. It's about understanding God's will and His work in our lives and the world. Embrace this gift and watch how it transforms not only your perception, but your actions and impact. Remember, to see beyond sight is to live a life aligned with the divine, filled with purpose and profound peace. Next, let's explore our fourth rare superpower is unwavering faith in trials. What does this really mean? In Christian life, unwavering faith is not merely about believing when things are going well. It's about maintaining steadfast faith even when the circumstances around you seem to crumble. This kind of faith sees beyond current struggles, anchoring itself in the truth and promises of God. It's a pillar of Christian doctrine because it exemplifies trust in God's sovereignty and His ultimate good, even in the face of adversity. The Bible is replete with examples of faith being tested. Take Abraham, for instance. God promised him countless descendants, yet asked him to sacrifice his son Isaac. Despite the unimaginable test, Abraham proceeded, his actions underpinned by a faith so strong that he believed God could even raise Isaac from the dead if needed. This story isn't just about obedience. It's about a faith that persists even when the promised path seems impossible. Such trials refine and strengthen our faith, proving its depth and resilience. Let's hear some modern tales of this enduring faith. Consider Sarah, a woman from our community whose child was diagnosed with a chronic illness. Every day was a challenge, but her faith never wavered. She often shared how her trust in God provided her with the strength to face each day, no matter how difficult. Then there's Michael, who lost his job unexpectedly. Instead of despairing, he used his time to volunteer and help others believing firmly that God was reshaping his path for a greater purpose. These stories of endurance not only inspire, but also illustrate the tangible impact of unwavering faith in real-life challenges. Building this kind of resilience in faith involves more than just wishful thinking. It requires a daily commitment to trust in God's plan. This can be nurtured through regular prayer, meditation on God's Word, and fellowship with other believers. It's also about reminding ourselves of God's past faithfulness in our lives and the lives of others. Every story of deliverance and provision builds our faith muscle, making it stronger and more equipped to handle future trials. In times of trial, the role of encouragement and support from the church community becomes crucial. We are called to bear one another's burdens, to uplift each other through prayer, practical help, and spiritual support. If you're going through a tough time, don't 
hesitate to reach out for help. And if you're in a season of relative peace, look around someone else might need your strength. Together, we can foster an environment where faith flourishes, even under pressure. As we wrap up our discussion on unwavering faith in trials, remember, this isn't about having a perfect, trouble-free life. It's about holding on to our faith through every season, trusting that our trials are not just obstacles, but opportunities to witness the profound strength and sufficiency of our God. So, whatever you're facing today, hold fast to that faith, knowing you're not alone, and your faith, however tested, will not only endure, but will also emerge stronger. Finally, let's talk about our last, rare superpower, transformative leadership. Now, what do we really mean by transformative in a spiritual context? It goes beyond merely leading or managing people. Transformative leadership is about making a deep and lasting impact, fostering change that resonates through people's lives and across communities. It's about leading in a way that reflects Christ's love and teachings, guiding others not just in practical matters, but in spiritual growth. This kind of leadership doesn't just aim to achieve goals, but to transform hearts and minds, aligning them closer to God's purpose. What makes a transformative leader? First, it's humility knowing that their strength and wisdom come from God, not themselves. Then, there's vision. They see beyond the mundane, capturing a glimpse of what could be inspired by divine insight. Patience is another crucial trait, as spiritual growth and community transformation don't happen overnight. They also exhibit unconditional love, echoing God's love, which accepts and uplifts regardless of circumstances. Finally, integrity stands at the core of transformative leadership, ensuring actions align with biblical truths and ethical standards. How do transformative leaders impact others? It's not just through words, but through actions that embody their values and beliefs. Take Martin Luther King Jr., for example, a leader who not only spoke of equality and justice, but lived these principles, inspiring change that still echoes today. Or consider Mother Teresa, whose simple acts of love and care for the destitute transformed countless lives and influenced many to do the same. These leaders did not just direct, they inspired, lived, and breathed their missions, becoming beacons of change through their unwavering commitment to their causes. Despite its rewards, transformative leadership comes with its fair share of challenges. Resistance to change is a common hurdle, as people often cling to the familiar, even if it's not beneficial. Misunderstandings and misinterpretations can also derail a leader's efforts requiring clear and consistent communication to keep everyone aligned with the vision. Moreover, spiritual leaders face the daily challenge of balancing their responsibilities with their personal spiritual growth and well-being. Overcoming these obstacles demands resilience, ongoing personal reflection, and a deep reliance on God's guidance and strength. Interested in developing these leadership qualities? Start by deepening your relationship with God as this is the foundation of all spiritual leadership. Engage regularly in prayer and Bible study to understand His Word and will. Actively seek mentorship and learning opportunities with established leaders who exemplify these traits. Practice servant leadership, which focuses on the needs of others before your own, encouraging and supporting your team members to grow and succeed. And always, be ready to listen, truly listen to the needs and hopes of those you lead. Remember, leadership is not just about guiding others, but growing with them. As we close this exploration of transformative leadership, remember that this superpower is about more than leading. It's about transforming. It's about leaving a legacy that echoes through generations, rooted in spiritual truths, and lived out through genuine, impactful actions. Whether you're leading a community, a church group, or your family, these principles can help you make a profound difference. So, take up the mantle with humility and courage, 
and let's transform our world, one act of faithful leadership at a time. As we wrap up today's discussion on these incredible superpowers, profound intuition, healing words, vision beyond sight, unwavering faith in trials, and transformative leadership, I hope you're feeling inspired and equipped. Each of these gifts is more than just a concept. They're real, tangible ways that God works through us to make a difference in our lives and the lives of those around us. They're about living out our faith in practical, powerful ways that reflect His love and purpose. Now, it's time to put these insights into action. Reflect on the superpowers we've discussed today and consider which one resonates most with you. How can you start harnessing these gifts in your daily life? Whether it's offering a word of encouragement, seeing beyond the surface, leading with integrity, or holding steadfast in faith during trials, there's a place for each of these superpowers in your journey. I encourage you to take a moment right now. Pray and ask God how He wants to use these gifts in your life. Reach out to those around you who might need a touch of healing words or a bit of transformative leadership. And if you found value in today's message, please don't keep it to yourself. Share this video with friends and family who might also be inspired by these teachings. Also, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below about which superpower you're most excited to develop or how you've seen these gifts at work in your own life. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our weekly inspirational content. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, these superpowers are not just for a chosen few. They're available to all who seek them. Let's embrace these gifts and live them out with purpose and passion. Until next time, stay blessed and keep shining brightly with the light of Christ in everything you do.